peace Israel <clears throat> thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth I've just finished doing the segment on the lesson on uh, I have a headache on this segment right here I'm gonna call this more headaches I'm pretty much going to do an overview of some of the troubles that we have faced and some of the troubles that we are facing and to have you kind of see or have a look at what has happened in the past what has happened currently and what do you expect us to see in the future all right let's first deal with slavery <clears throat> slavery has been a terrible thing we know of this <clears throat> Uh, and we can still see the effects of slavery today in all the many nations of the earth where we dwell. <clears throat> it affects our families. It affects our thinking. It affects our day-to-day -day lives. And we know that this was a horrendous situation and a horrendous circumstance in which we have been punished by the Most High. And that punishment has been carried out by our enemies. Now during the times of slavery can you imagine how that level of violence affected our sons, how it affected our daughters, how it affected our men once they were stripped of the ability to be a man, to be a leader, to be a protector to be a husband and a father. Imagine how that has affected our males throughout the generations. Also, imagine how it has affected our women, that our women have had to play the role of both the woman and the man because the man was stripped. So therefore, our women had to be independent because the man was of no help to her. She had to make her own way and had to be stronger than she needed to be for the simple fact that her protector, i.e. the man, was not present and he was killed and he could not be a man or display any attributes of a man and a defender and a provider for if he did, he would have been killed think of how that has affected our people through the generations so we sought relief from those hardships from those terrible times and the Most High has eased our affliction we're no longer in chains at this moment at least not physical chains <clears throat> so we were brought through slavery we were killed by mass numbers we were lied to and subjugated to all manner of wickedness and cruelty. So we arrived at what we would call the Jim Crow era, where slaves were apparently freed, apparently freed, emancipated as they call it, but yet with Jim Crow, they were initially still enslaved because there were laws, rules, and regulations that were put into place that would punish them unjustly and put them back into service without wages. So we move from slavery up to the Jim Crow era where we're pretty much enduring the same hardships, not being able to move about freely, etc. Not being able to provide for our families, etc. Next, we find ourselves with more headaches as we come into the segregation era where okay we have been freed we may have sharecropping jobs or menial jobs for next to nothing and we are segregated from the rest of the society we are segregated from prosperity most importantly from having a job that's equal to our counterparts or who we deem to be our counterparts so we're still at the bottom of the realm <clears throat> so the segregation aspect 
comes into play where our schools are different from others where we eat differently than others where we the place we sit etc and travel etc were very different from the people that were among us so we were separated from them and in many regards we did not have access and still don't to the many things that they have had to increase the quality of one's life so we came to the segregation era <clears throat> now after the segregation era now we come up to the civil rights era the civil rights era happens to be where we realize and we're seeing clearly that we have been treated unfairly and unjustly and we are now marching protesting and having sit-ins in order to gain quote unquote justice so there are boycotts etc throughout this nation what we see here clearly is the house of Israel trying to be a part of that that which has oppressed them and as we get through this point we have many leaders you have your Malcolm X and the Marcus Garvey's you have the uh, Dr. Martin Luther King etc etc keep in mind that none of these men have ever emphasized the law statutes judgments and precepts of the Most High and have never told the house of Israel that we need to return back onto the law in order to be freed number one respected and to be above all nations on the face of the earth we were never told by any of these men that we were the house of Israel we were never told by any of these men that we were to separate ourselves from the nations in which we live to separate ourselves from the customs and their ways <clears throat> So what you're seeing here slowly is the growing up of the house of Israel. For we have followed after the ways of Dr. King in what we would call the civil rights era. And so we move from the headache of slavery into more headaches of Jim Crow, into more headaches of segregation. And now we're in the civil rights era where we have more headaches. <clears throat> So we are in the midst of individuals, of people to where if you seek that which is right and that which is just, they will kill you. Let me say that again. <clears throat> the nation in which you live, in which we live, if you seek righteousness, if you seek that which is just, if you seek that which is justice, they will kill you. So... <clears throat> We have sought justice. We have sought that which is right. And our grandmothers have been beaten. Our daughters have been bit by dogs, along with our uncles and our forefathers, etc. We have seen these things on films, such as Eyes on the Prize and things like that. All these films have been taken away. They no longer show these things because they do not want the children of Israel to remember them and for them to remember what this nation has done to their forefathers however the Most High will bring us to remembrance and he will remind us of all, uh, of all this we will be reminded of all that has happened to us so though our enemies may try to buy these films remove them from public view of what they have actually done to us how they have treated us and try to make it as though this has never been the Most High has eyes on all that was done to his people now <clears throat> as it pertains to the civil rights era like I have said before our people had many leaders during that time and we sought after many leaders none of whom ever pointed us in the direction of the Most High's law. Next, we come into the integration era. Now we're trying to be like those who have oppressed us. We have joined the military forces. 
we are now fighting alongside our enemies against their enemies. We are now speaking and defending that which has been oppressive and offensive to us. Can you imagine that for one second? Imagine those of us who fought in World War I, World War II, men who look just like me, men of the House of Israel, who are fighting with his enemy, against the enemies of his enemies. Think of that for one second. So we are now in the integration era where instead of us doing that which was commanded to us, which was to separate from the nations and to distance ourselves from their ways, their customs, and their gods, what we have done is we have taken a hold of their ways and their customs and their gods and have been married unto them. We have given, some people have given their daughters unto their sons and their sons unto their daughters in these many nations. We have gone in total reverse. And as we go through these stages, I want you to see clearly how our headaches are being increased. So, as we come into the integration era, now we're seeking political power, financial power. So we'll cover that. From the political spectrum, we have always thought that, you know, well, we're being locked up unjustly. This may be. We need some quote unquote black police officers. So, what the Most High has done, He's given us black police officers. He's given us black police chiefs. But guess what? All those black police and the black police chief, they're all working in concert with our enemies. These black police and the black police chief, they are not in solidarity with their people they are in solidarity with the powers that be and they will march to their drum beat so we asked for the black policemen we asked the black police commissioners we've got them and what we have now is the black police chief we still having our people are still getting murdered left and right and the police chief is black so who do you blame <clears throat> We're seeing corruption within the police departments. Some of them are ran by Israelites. So we wanted and sought a black police, black police chiefs and black police hoping to find some relief that maybe there will not be so many murders in the street and we may not see as much corruption. That has not worked. So now we sought to have more quote unquote black politicians. So you've elected councilmen, you've elected mayors, you've elected governors, and you finally have elected a president that looks like you, that looks like us. Now, under this president's watch, none of his causes were our causes. He had fought for the rights of gays and everyone else. <clears throat> but no legislation has been passed on the behalf of the children of Israel. So <clears throat> what all of this has proven to us to our very face and the Most High made plain that he will repay us to our very face. Number one, these police that look like us do not have our interest at heart. The politicians that look like us do not have our interest at heart, and that is why they fail you, and they will fail us. They, number one, do not adhere to the statutes, laws, judgments, and precepts of the Most High, can care less about it. Their allegiance is with their enemies, because that's who pays them. Their allegiance is not to our people and their allegiance is not to the Most High and His laws. That's what binds us and that is what is supposed to bind us. So what our men have been binded to is number one, 
power, two, money, and the compliments and being pushed up on the pedestal by their enemies. So we have tried the, polit the political road, and we've got someone who looked just like us, and he has stayed for as long as one can stay. And most I wanted to make a point with Barack Obama <clears throat> to all of Israel. He wanted to make a point that you may put one of us in there and he can stay there for the full length of eight terms. And under his watch, we've seen more Israelites being killed than we can recall by police in the streets. So a black president won't save you. <clears throat> a black councilman will not save you. Black policemen will not save you. As it pertains to policemen, our men are weak. Our men are cowards. <clears throat> and they're weak and they're cowardly because they do not have the strength of the Most High's law behind them. They're not walking in it. Now, with all the violence that you have seen over the years, as it pertains to our men being shot, our sons, our uncles, our fathers, <clears throat> You have not seen any of the black police chiefs step up and speak and say what is happening to our sons and our daughters is incorrect. No one has spoken against that that looks like us. One woman had stepped up and spoke about this injustice and she was reprimanded for it. So our men are so weak that our women actually have to speak on the behalf of the men. That's how cowardly the men have become. Secondly, men who look like me, dark-skinned Israelites. Many have lied down with heathen and have produced mixed babies. It's so bad now that the man of Israel who looks like me, <clears throat> they are so cowardly that many of their mixed sons actually have to step forth and defend our people. That's how cowardly our men have become. <clears throat> and that is only because there is fear in them. They are fearful of the power structure and they're fearful of being cut from the benefits of the power structure. Now, these are some of the headaches of our people. Now, let's touch on something recent pertaining to one of our men, and then we'll go back a few months, maybe a year or so, to another instance. An instance of Dennis Rodman was on TV crying over the situation with North Korea. This man is an Israelite, unbeknownst to him, but his petition is to bring sport to North Korea and is speaking on how on the humanity of the people, et cetera, et cetera. And now he fell in love with the place. So this grown man is on TV crying, crying on the behalf of Koreans and a unity between America and Koreans. Now, I have never seen ever a Korean crying on the behalf of our people. I've never seen a Korean crying when our sons are being shot down in the street, professing the injustice against our people or speaking on the humanity of our people. I have never seen it. If you have, please put it in the box below that way I can see who that Korean man is that spoke on the behalf of our people when we were being unjustly killed or sentenced or anything that was being done that was foul to our people. Show me a Korean that has ever cried on our behalf. I have not seen it. So this is part of the confusion of faith that is upon the house of Israel as a whole and upon the men of the house of Israel. The men of any nation are its leaders. When our men are weak, our nation becomes weak. And we are weak for the simple fact that we have not taken a hold of the most highest laws and we do not walk in it. And we will vote people into office and support those who will not walk after the law, statutes, judgments, and praises of the most high 
And since they do not do that, all our politicians have failed us. The black ones, all these black police chiefs and these black politicians, they're all thieves and crooks, just like our enemies. And they have proven themselves to be that. So do not be fooled by those who look like you. I want you to understand that some of the enemies of the Most High are the Most High's people. Let me say that again. Some of those who hate the Most High will not follow His word and hate His people are His very people. There are many Israelites who hate to be Israelites, who can't stand the sight of a very man that looks just like him. There are some women who are Israelites that cannot stand the sight of an Israelite man, have no compassion upon our children or upon us. So do not be fooled by someone who looks like you. Do not be fooled into thinking that you are on one accord with them. They will surprise you. They are on one accord with their enemies and they are against you. And it's not hard for you to figure those individuals out. Next, we're dealing with, there's a man by the name of, what is this man's name, I'm thinking. Uh, very muscular guy. He comes in comedies, but he's not a comedian. He's more silly than he is a comedian. He's, he's actually stupid, but that's my personal opinion. His name is Terry Crews. <clears throat> this man was groped by another man at a Hollywood party. And he states that he was there with his wife and the man groped him, rub upon his uh, private parts. And this man, Terry Crews, is an Israelite, very muscular, well-built man, uh, and a former MF NFL player. He states clearly, upon being groped by this man, this Hollywood executive, that he refrained and restrained himself from doing harm to this man. And his wife was proud of him that he didn't react in a violent manner because I'm assuming that they were at a party or at a gala function of some sort. I'm a man. <clears throat> and any man that touches me in any way, shape, or form in my private area, I'm going to knock all his fronts out <clears throat> in front of everyone. <clears throat> let alone you try to pull that in front of my wife. I don't care if it's just me and you in the room. If you did that, there's a problem. And I'm going to I'm going to hurt you. That's just the way it is. I'm just telling you how I think. Punching him won't do. I'm going to have to kick him, <clears throat> to be honest with you. So here we have a man who another man had groped him. And he states that his wife was proud of him because he did not react in a violent manner. Now, let's analyze this. <clears throat> Here you have a man who is built, who is a former NFL player, a professional athlete <clears throat> turned actor. This man has acted in movies where he has played gay parts, gay roles. We all know to lie down with another man is an abomination before the Most High. And there are to be no sodomites of the sons of Israel. We know this. So this man had the nerve to get on TV and say that <clears throat> his wife was proud of him for not retaliate, retaliating after the man had groped him. Now, my question would be, does Terry Crews have a son? Does Terry Crews have a daughter? And my response and my thinking to all of this would be this. What woman, what woman would allow her man, her husband, to take a gay role? As a woman, if a woman is thinking and is entrenched in the most highest law, the first thing she would tell that man, if he's not in the law, number one, that is an abomination before the most high. That would be number one. Number two, no husband of a righteous woman, she's not going to let him do that. That's on film. That will be there for everyone to see years to come. Secondly, a righteous woman of the house of Israel, 
certainly is going to understand the implications of her son seeing his father act in that manner or her daughter seeing her father act in that manner. Moreover, she would consider the implications and the damage that it would cause for those of us in the house of Israel who visit the theaters, who look at movies, she would take into consideration how that affects the whole nation that would look at this. Moreover, consideration would also be taken as to how people of the other nations will perceive our men who sees this. So here you have a man who is muscular, who is a professional football player, who is a coward at heart. The reason why he came forward out of his own mouth was that the women, women of the other nations, gave him the courage to come forward. That is the most cowardice thing I've heard from any man. And that's what we've got. We've got a bunch of muscle-bound cowards who are fearful of the establishment, who are fearful of their women, who hold no responsibility in how they carry themselves to the nation of Israel, to the people that look like them, to the children, to the sons and daughters that's looking up to the screen to see a man that's built like he is, that represents what everything a man should be, at least in appearance. And he gets on TV and says that some women gave him the courage to come forward after a man groped him. First of all, what this Terry Crews needs to understand, if you are walking in the statutes, judgments, and precepts of the Most High, you wouldn't be taking any gay roles. That's number one. That man groped you for the simple fact that he knew that you wouldn't do anything. That's why he did that. Because your actions from the past shows what type of man you are. And that's not one. So, this is the foolishness and the madness and the confusion of face that's within the house of Israel. Our men are not men. And our women, in many instances, have to stand up and play the role of a man. And so now it's gotten so bad to where our women feel as though I don't need a man. And in most cases, they are right because the man is not a man. He is a man in appearance. He is a male. But there's certainly a difference between a male and a man. So these are the these are the things, these are the headaches that we're dealing with in the house of Israel. You see now where a lot of the, they call them icons, are being brought low. All those of the house of Israel who have benefited by joining onto their enemies in Hollywood, that have taken part in the wickedness and the sickness of their enemies, in order to gain status, fame, and finances, the Most High are bringing them to naught. He's bringing them down. And we're going to see clearly as they all crumble and fall because what they have done, they have estranged themselves from their own people. And most importantly, they are estranged from the laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts of the Most High. Understand these people do not have your interest at heart at all. So you're seeing now with the NFL players and you see the situation that's going on with them. Once again, these are muscle-bound cowards that will not speak up for our people in no way, shape, or form. They will not make any sacrifice on the behalf of our people if it's going to cost them one dollar. Muhammad Ali is famed and loved by our people for one reason, not because of his jab or anything, for the simple fact that that man stood for what was right as it pertains to the treatment of our people and showed us and reminded us 
that a man will make a sacrifice on the behalf of his people, on behalf of his children, and on the behalf of himself. And even if it means his life, even if it means his wealth. And so now we have a bunch of men that will stand for nothing, will not stand up for themselves, and certainly will not stand up on the behalf of their people. But times are changing, and we are grabbing a hold of the Most High's law. So watch for the men of Israel to stand up, to speak up against the Terry Cruises, the homosexuals, and to speak up against those who will not speak up on the behalf of our own people. And to only place their trust in the Most High, and to be in the company of those who do, and will adhere to the Most High's law. So, Israel, we've got a bunch of headaches. And Terry Crews and Dennis Rodman are but two of them. But this is rampant throughout the earth, whether it be here or any other place where we dwell. We are seeing the same thing with our men. They have been stripped. So, <clears throat> this is not to blame our men for where we are. We have put ourselves in this position. What we are to do now is we are to return back to the law, statutes, judgments, and precepts of the Most High. Once we do that, then it will strengthen us and we will not be cowards to the establishment and we will not be cowards to where we will teach our sons and our daughters to be fearful of heathen. So right now we're in a position to where we're teaching our kids how to be afraid of the police and to be afraid of this and that. Look, at no point in time should the righteous ever be fearful of the wicked. And we see clearly that the people around us have been wicked, have treated us wickedly, have mistreated us. But what we have done is, in order to find some relief, we have binded ourselves to them. In the military, the warriors of World War One and World War II, who look like us, the men of Israel, were never given their due. They were treated unfairly in service, and upon returning home, they were treated unfairly as well. And they thought they were doing the right thing for the nation when the nation had never have never cared for them. So I say that to say this, and I am a former infantry marine, so I've been there. Understand that we're trying to be a part of something that has never or was never created for us to be a part of it. So, when we start to seek relief by joining our enemies, hoping to get a bigger slice of bread, that will do nothing but present more headaches to us. And that's where we are today. We have now joined our enemies to go fight their enemies in hope that we would get some relief and once the fighting is over we are reminded exactly who we are and where we are in other words joining your enemies will not get you out of this joining your enemies will give you no relief what this will do is multiply our headaches so look at the stages of the house of Israel we've gone from slavery times to now we're in integration and we're still seeing the same problems think of it as a woman before she delivers a child she goes through many different stages of trouble so our people are not too far from being delivered so <clears throat> determine where you stand do you stand with the most high or do you stand with your enemies we continue to place our trust in these nations we want to place our trust in the judicial system. The judicial system has failed us. You want to place your trust in the Constitution. That has failed you. So now we want to go and 
work on building a financial future to be independent. Okay, we've tried that with Black Wall Street. They bombed it. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we've tried uh, going to other nations. You tried it with Liberia. Marcus Garvey did not work. So, all the methods that's being suggested right now by those who are most influential among our people, these are methods that we have tried. We have tried all that Dr. Boyce Watkins is proposing and is doing. And I think he's doing good work. In a perfect world, yes, that will work. You know, there's many that are speaking right now to really positive things that we should do and can do to help our circumstances, our finances, etc. But <clears throat> as it pertains to finances, we may build wealth by doing business amongst ourselves and starting our own business, etc. However, one thing that we must keep in mind, number one, we do not control this currency. We do not print it. We do not control its valuations or its fluctuations. At any given time, any man of Israel who claims that he is rich can be broke overnight. Number one, our enemies can simply take the currency and do away with it and tell you what it is you have is of no worth anymore. So, you are not rich if your enemies hold your money in their banks. <clears throat> Doesn't make any sense. Because they can take it. They can confiscate it. They can also do away with it and start a new currency and tell you that the, what you have is of no good. So, if you think that your enemies will allow you to start businesses and use the money that they have created, that they print that they control both the fluctuations of it and the value system of it and the exchange rates of it. You think that they're going to let you run businesses and do all these things that you plan to do with their money. And so you can outdo them. That's not happening. So that's something for us to think about as it pertains to that. I'm in favor of entrepreneurship. I'm in favor of small business. I'm in favor of all of these things. That's not to knock on that. Um, I'm for picking up one by one's bootstraps, if you will. But at the same time, we are to be sensible in our approach. All of these things that we're speaking of currently, as far as getting ourselves together economically, etc., we have done all of these things before they have failed. We have more multi-millionaires and billionaires than we have ever had before that are Israelites. At the same time, they don't have factories that employ us. So these are just some of the things to consider. We have more degrees than we've ever had as far as our academics, etc. in the House of Israel. But those with the degrees, they work for universities that do not serve our people. So all of this that our people seek to achieve and to do is never with the intent to serve our people. So we're to be mindful of that. And these are the reasons why our headaches are multiplied. We are to consider these things in the latter days. Our men are going to be the ones that turns this thing around. Our men will have to be men. We'll have to stop being afraid of the power structure, being afraid of their women and afraid of anything else. And the only way this spirit of fear is going to be removed from the spirit of our men is once we return to the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. There's no need to entrench yourself in America or any other nation. The end of these nations are going to be destruction. Their money system is going to be destroyed. And the majority of the people are going to be destroyed. So there's no need to entrench yourself and try to be a part of something that will cease 
from being. Because the Most High said these nations are going to be as though they have never been. So, it is of no end. It is of no avail for you to partner up and to buddy up with those that are just not going to be around. Most importantly, the men of Israel need to be very careful and the women of Israel also because there are many of us who are against us, like I've said before, many of our enemies actually are us and look like us. When you take a stance, any Israelite that takes a stance against the house of Israel, you're going to be in trouble. There was a point in time where one of our people would betray and be a traitor unto our people and he'd get away scot-free. That time is now to where anything that you do and say to the house of Israel, there will be reprisal for it. And that doesn't go for just Israelites who are traitors. That will go for all those of the nations who seek to do harm to the house of Israel. That point is coming where just to speak against a man of the house of Israel or the house of Israel, there will be punishments for it. Because as we turn to this law, the Most High will strengthen us. So these are some things to consider. Look at the headaches that we have. Lots of it is our own doing. And the pill to solve this pain that we're going through is the Most High's law. And it is, it is our men that will teach this law. And it is our men that will strengthen up and build the nation of Israel. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Turn to this law. Peace.